Hi, Randy, K7AGE. I'm outside with my Superantenna MP1 portable vertical antenna, and I'm going to use Whisper software to do some antenna checks to see how well the, my signal is being received. I'm going to run three checks, one during the mid-afternoon here in California, one during the gray line, and another check this evening. They're all going to be for, for about one hour. And what the Whisper software does is sends out a signal, and people can receive it and post the results to the net. Let's quickly look at this in operation. This is the Whisper software. My radio is currently in receive. goes into a nearly two minute transmit cycle. Listen to the tone carefully. At the end of two minutes, the station send their reception reports to whispernet.org, where you can do an update on the map and see the stations that have received your signal. Isn't this neat? Let's go back to the portable antenna. The super antenna is made up of several pieces. There's an adjustable coil that slides up and down. There's a whip up on the top, and I'm using a MFJ 10-foot whip versus the 6-foot whip that comes with the Super Antenna MP1. It also has uh, four ground radios, and I've made ones especially for 20 meters, so I have four of them pulled out here on the patio, each about 16 and a half feet long. I set the antenna up using my MFJ 259 antenna analyzer and have the SWR running at about 1.1. For my radio equipment, I'm going to use my FT817 running at 5 watts and my little Asus T100 uh, laptop netbook uh, running the Whisper software. I'm just going to set it over here and let it run. We'll check the web to see the results. So I'm not going to tell you about Whisper. I'm going to let Joe Taylor, K1JT, the author, developer, and our Nobel laureate, tell you about it. He spoke about this at the ARRL Centennial. Uh, just before I uh, turn it over to Joe, if you like this video, vote on the thumbs up. You can uh, subscribe to my YouTube channel. You can also follow me on Twitter at K7AGE and on Google Plus at plus K7AGE. And then there's this uh, mode called Whisper, uh, which is a good acronym because it's uh, used for very low power transmissions, basically probing propagation conditions and uh, Whisper has become uh, extremely popular. Uh, but people that are interested in the, in the uh, science of, of uh, radio propagation, but also just as a learning tool for, uh, for shortwave and amateur uh, uh, means of, of various different kinds. The uh, Whisper stands for the Weak Signal Propagation Reporter. Uh, it's a uh, sort of quasi-beacon mode. We don't call it a beacon, but uh, it, it's sort of like beacons in that it, it transmits but doesn't uh, uh, conduct two-way conversations. Uh, it makes a transmission that lasts for two minutes, starting at the top of a, of a UTC minute. You've got to have your computer clock synchronized to UTC. And uh, it randomizes the periods at which it transmits or receives in such a way that if a bunch of people are using it on the same small slice of band, uh, on the same band, uh, you get a chance to hear each other. That is, you don't always transmit at the same time the other guy transmits. Typically, uh, people will set their, their whisper system up so that it transmits about uh, maybe 20% of the time and receives 80% of the time. So you basically can hear all the other signals that are on the air while you're not transmitting yourself. The messages are always uh, very simple and straightforward. It, it includes your call sign, your grid locator, a four-digit locator that specifies your position on the Earth, and then a two-digit number which gives the power level at which you're transmitting in dB above one milliwatt. So my, uh, the example uh, call sign that was on the screen a minute ago, and I hope you'll see again in a minute. <laughs> <laughs> uh, is K1JT FN20 my locator and 37, 37 dB above one milliwatt is five watts. So that's uh, my typical power when I'm playing Whisper. Whisper is a very efficient mode as far as uh, spectrum usage is concerned and the tiny little slice of spectrum on each band that is devoted to whispering is only 200 hertz wide. Uh, but in that 200 hertz uh, you can get a dozen or more signals uh, and decode them all. Uh, that, uh, except maybe if a couple of them land on top of each other, but that won't happen the next time they transmit, probably. And uh, the signals are only about six hertz wide, each one. So they're very small uh, in frequency space, and, uh, and you can get a lot of them into a small space. 
Uh, if you are, if your computer that is running Whisper is connected to the internet, you can tick a box on the screen so that uh, all of your reception reports will be uploaded to a central database that's run by W1BW up here in New England somewhere, and uh, the whispernet.org site uh, will display them on a world map, and I'll, I'll show you some examples of that in a minute. There are 500 or so people on the air every day whispering to each other, <laughs> uh, and that's kind of a fun statistic. Over the years since uh, whispering started in 2008, there's something like 200 million of these uh, reception reports now stored in a database at uh, the whispernet.org site. Uh, that's what the what the screen looks like. The vertical space, the vertical display there on the uh, on the spectrogram is uh, frequency, and that's the full 200 hertz band. Uh, I think at, at the time this was the screenshot was made, that's on the 30 meter band. So it's a tiny little slice of spectrum on, on 30 meters. And uh, the little horizontal green dashes uh, are the two minute long uh, whisper receptions from various different stations. The full uh, time on the horizontal axis is about half an hour. Uh, each of those vertical stripes is, is the one two minute interval. And the vertical uh, green lines that you see uh, correspond to the intervals, the two minute intervals in which your own station transmitted. So you can sort of keep track of how often you're transmitting there. Um, here's what the map looks like. You've probably, many of you have probably seen this. So you just have lines connecting stations that have been received by each other during the, uh, you can, and you can specify to the, to the mapping uh, uh, interface here. Uh, you can specify exactly what you want to see, which uh, you can select a band. Uh, here's a single band display, for example. You can see where, the, where that band was open at that time between what parts of the world. You can specify a particular call sign, for example, your own, and see all the stations that are hearing your signals or that you are hearing their signals. If you click on the little flag that has your call sign on it, it'll pop up a list of all the stations that are hearing you and a list of all the stations that you have reported hearing. Uh, that's kind of fun. You can keep track of things. Okay, that was a nice description of Whisper from Joe. Let's take a look at his website to find out where to find the software in the user manual and to be able to download it. I'm not going to show you all the steps of how to do all this. It's fairly well detailed in the, in the user guide. So let's take a look at the web page and see where to go find this. So this is the Whisper web page and we scroll down here a little bit you'll see Whisper 2.0 and 2.1. 2.0 is what I've been using and that will work for 99% of the users. Scroll down the page and you can see the downloads for Whisper 2.0 for Windows and Linux and documentation. You can see Whisper 2.0 uh, user's guide. So you want to get the software and get the user's guide. This is what the user's guide looks like. It's about 20 pages long, but you really only need to, if you're going to print this out, only print out the first six pages. So this takes you through how to set up the software. So, so I'm going to let you look at those details. When you run Whisper, you get two windows that open up. This DOS window, you can just minimize because everything is going to be done on the program window. Okay, let's look at some of the setup parameters to set up Whisper. They're under the setup menu, station parameters. The first field is your call sign. The next one's your grid. I'll show you a web page here in a second that sets that. The next two have to deal with your audio in and out. And I'm using a signal link USB. So that's the USB codec. The power level, and if you just hold your mouse over there, you can see it shows me five watts at 37. I'm using Vox for the push to talk because the signal link has a Vox built in, therefore I'm not using a serial port. I do not enable the cat command um, for my radio, I just set the dial manually. The band drop down allows you to automatically control the radio if you have cat enabled. I'm running my system manually, so I'm going to select 20 meters. In the frequency area here, there's a dial and a transmit frequency shown. So the dial is what you tune your radio to for a whisper on 20 meters, 14.0956 in upper sideband. The transmit frequency you can control within the waterfall here. Now we don't see anything at the moment, but if I double click on a spot on the 
display there, it says it will set the transmit frequency to that, and you can see the little cursor has moved. Whisper also requires that your clock to be set properly. Let's let's check my clock here against WWV. At the film, 21 hours, 34 minutes, coordinated universal time. That's good. You can uh, set this manually on your computer or use Windows has a uh, setting in the clock area that you can set it against uh, a network time server or a program like Dimension. Okay, we're coming to the end of a uh, two minute sequence here. You can see when it's receiving, all you see is the uh, box here that says receiving. There's no live waterfall. So when the um, transmit sequence ends, which is gonna be in just a couple seconds, Bang. Waiting to start, decoding, it drew in the past two minutes worth of waterfall. I'm still decoding. And I decoded one signal, KD6RF in EM22. He's running five watts and he was a minus 13 dB signal level. This is the WhisperNet web page. Shows a map. And I have it filtered now for only the stations that I was hearing or was hearing me, but I'm only in the receive mode. I'm not transmitting here. So if you scroll this down, you can select which band you want to be monitoring, all bands. You can put in a call sign to filter. If you leave it empty, you'll see everything. Uh, this just centers the map, and this is for the time period. So uh, this is what I was seeing as I was receiving there. And again, uh, some local and some stations far away. Here's a neat web page I found that shows grid squares. When you're at this zoom level, it shows you the first two letters, the major part of the grid. So as I click around here, watch this change. So this is the CM area, the DM, EM, FM. And you go further north, it's FN, EN, DN, and CM. This is pretty neat. Now if you zoom in a little bit, you'll now get a smaller grid. So I know I am in Charlie Mike 99 and KD. And I can hit show. So zoom that in. And this is the area that I live in. And if I go to Whisper here, let's pick out a station. Um, K4RCG FM08. So if I put FM08 in there and hit show. It now shows the path between me and his station, or his grid, and it tells me it's 2,249 miles. That's pretty neat. So there quickly is kind of how Whisper works, but remember that I started this whole thing in the beginning of the video to see how my FT817 running five watts to the adjustable vertical antenna did. Let's take a look, three grabs off the Whisper net site. So this is at just about 000 UTC my time, which would still be in the afternoon. You can see I was uh, seeing uh, stations from the, basically from the mid to the east side of the United States and this one station up in Greenland. I wonder if that was really real or maybe had its grid, grid square set wrong. I really don't know. This was during the gray line time. So again, the eastern side of the United States down into Central America as well as out into the Pacific, Australia and New Zealand in this E50W station. And the next plot is during my night time, so at 0530 UTC, you can see I'm still seeing, or stations still on the east coast are receiving me, as well as this K4EH in Greenland, if that's real. And uh, again, several in Australia and a couple in New Zealand, as well as one station in Japan copied my signal. So I think the FT817 and that vertical antenna worked pretty well. And that's what the whole idea of all this was, to use Whisper to, to check out your antenna, to see what it's doing, or check propagation. Put a signal out, it runs. The other stations receiving whisper signals automatically send that up to the website where you can go and, go and look. Pretty neat way to take a look at things. This is Randy, K7AGE. Thanks for watching. Interestingly, if you uh, 
try Googling just the words uh, Stellar Whisper, and you'll come up with a, uh, a nice website of a guy that is building uh, Whisper receiver kits. And he all, he distribute, you can order the kit for, I think it's $49.95 or something like that. You can build it for either 20 meters or 30 meters. Uh, it, it, you can put it together in, a, in an afternoon, in, in, a, in, a, in an hour or two. It's very simple. Uh, you can, in fact, uh, order from the same website uh, free lesson plans to be used by teachers in grade schools or middle schools, and the kids can build the receivers. And it's a very good way of getting kids. You don't need a license to receive whisper signals, after all. It's uh, receive only. Uh, as well, I mean, you could transmit if you were licensed, but with this hardware, it's receive only. And uh, it, it's a very effective way of, of uh, uh, getting some, uh, some um, kids interested in and building their own electronics and seeing how it all works and, and uh, getting themselves interested in things that may very well lead to ham radio and to other things later in life.